Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Angel. I'm a director of photography and DIY colorist based in Mumbai, India. On my channel, I have a whole series about the editing basics of DaVinci Resolve 18, and I have just started my color grading uh, series. This is episode number two. The first episode uh, was about the user interface of the software of the color tab in particular. In this episode number two, I am going to start you up with some setup. So this setup can be done before you start the edit. It can be done after you have just finished your edit and you are about to start your color grading process. But once you are deep into your color grading process, then you should not change these things. So I'm talking about color management. But keep in mind, because this is a color grading basics series, so I'm not going to dive deep into why these color changes are to be taken. And I'm not going to be diving deep into the science behind it. That will come in a in an advanced level, all right, for you guys. I will make sure that that video comes. But for now, you can just follow along so that you don't do any mistakes, right? So let's begin with this uh, project that we have here. At the moment, you can see that these footage, uh, these clips are very faded. They are very desaturated because these were shot in C-Log3. Up till this point, uh, you were seeing these, you know, uh, clips uh, on my previous episodes, but they were color managed and you could not uh, see these uh, log style footage before. But now since we are talking about the color, I have reset them to their actual native state. As you can see, I have a clip selected and I have my HDR palette selected with the zones on. All right. So in the zones graph, you can see uh, how this graph is looking at the moment. This is important because we are going to make some changes in the color management and that will affect the zones of every footage on the timeline. Right, so just keep this in mind for the moment. Let's go to the bottom rightmost corner in the settings. We have color management here and these are the default settings that your software is going to come with. All right, now we don't want to change the color signs. That is perfect. We can uh, click on this use separate color space and gamma. These settings are very helpful when your uh, deliverables are particular. Uh, let's choose and let's change the timeline color space from Rec 709 to DaVinci White Gamut and your Gamma to DaVinci Intermediate. This is very important because uh, when I hit enter to these settings, this zone graph will change because uh, these HDR palette and similar tools like that are uh, color space sensitive and when I'm changing the color space of my timeline this zone graph will also change accordingly and I need that because I want the maximum amount of details and the maximum amount of color in my you know editing process before I am ready to export it or output that color. Now talking about the output color space as a color gradist you will always be given a guideline to what your deliverable is going to be at and otherwise you can't go wrong with Rec 709 with Gamma 2.4. So these are the standard for your web applications like YouTube and you know internet in general and most of the monitors are also calibrated to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and so is mine. So with this in mind let's see the zone graph once again uh, on my HDR palette before we hit save. Now since uh, again my timing color space is now going to be DaVinci white gamut it will change my zone graph. As you can see, it has expanded my graph, which will mean that I can have bigger zones and better control on my tools like HDR color palette, on curves, and on the color warper tool, and so on and so forth. You will learn about all of those things in a you know later video. But for the moment, you will understand why uh, it was important to switch my timeline to DaVinci White Gamut. And the thing is, if you do it, once you are deep into your color grading, and then you choose to, you know, switch your timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamut, it will change your colors, it will change the hues or, you know, the dynamic range of your footage and that will ruin the look that you have already created. So you won't want to do that. You want to, you know, create the look once you're already uh, in this better uh, intermediate color space, right? But sometimes what will happen is that the changes you have made to your color management won't apply to your timeline. In my case, it did because I'm running the latest uh, version of DaVinci Resolve, which is 18.6.5. But sometimes in previous versions, you might need to duplicate, uh, you know, your timeline to a new fresh timeline so that 
that particular timeline will have the effect of the color management change that you have just done. So to do so, if in case it's needed, you can go to your timeline and uh, let's select everything. Let's open my timeline view options so that I can see the version. Let's duplicate everything by control A and control C. I will create a new timeline. I won't duplicate it because that will not make any difference, right? So let's create a new timeline. Let's not rename it for the sake of it right now. And by pressing I and control V, I will duplicate it. All right. So in this new timeline, those color management changes will definitely take place if you have made them. And if you can't see it in your existing timeline. So, so in this way, you can edit first and then you know uh, apply color management to your footage but in any case you can't uh, change your timeline color space after you have already color graded these clips because that will change uh, how they you know originally looked okay so this was an uh, intermediate episode which was very much needed because uh, otherwise your color grading wouldn't have been technical if you were following along with me if you are trying to learn and color grade a project at the same time. So I thought that I should make it beforehand only. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope that you stick around my channel, subscribe for the new content and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.